beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed jesus christ um, we're going to be very fast tonight um, as we know the security situation in Kaduna state as a whole uh, is not at its best we pray we thank God for peace here so we do our very best to make sure that um, we we are fast enough so that we can give people room to go and rest hallelujah I'll just um, do something very quickly that I usually would not do. A gentleman, one of our fine young men, um, wrote a book, beautiful book, 25 Important Things I Wish I Knew Before I Turned 25. And um, I went through it and it was a beautiful book and I just thought to support him and, and bless him. Where's Emmanuel? Emmanuel? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, no, please stand. Please stand. A good leader, listen, doesn't maintain followers. A good leader, according to a great mentor, turns followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. Are we together now? Yes. And um, this is absolutely brilliant that at this level, He's already reaching out to people, very quality content, intelligently written, and very sound, and all of that. So I thought to support him. I usually will not do this, but I made up my mind that I was going to endorse his book. I know that a number of you have all kinds of things that you do. Um, I'm very particular about excellence. It's not enough for you to have good content. It should be something that... Um, reflects what you are being taught here so this is his book it's a wonderful book and um i think he wrote it if i'm not mistaken with a bias for those who are from maybe 24 years downwards to help them maximize this phase of their lives but i don't think it's limited to just people under 25 um it's a very wonderful book and um he brought a few copies. I want to encourage you to please get it. You can drop it with the uh, PR at the PR stand, the public relations stand there. And um, doesn't mean next week you carry your book and bring. This is a particular a favor I'm doing him. We are very disciplined people. Don't go and drop your book just because I'm doing this. This is something God put in my heart, and I think he deserves it. I've watched him grow and develop his leadership. Praise the Lord. And so I just thought, let's support him. I don't believe that he wrote the book just to make money. The, the, the kind of teaching and transformation that you are receiving here, you know that um, if you commit yourself to this just to feed yourself, then you are very small. You should have 
impact at heart but then as you do that there will always be a system of reward praise the lord how much does this go for one thousand this goes for one thousand so please support him you can buy buy for your children um, how many copies are here 200 so outside you can pick for your children pick for a few people and um our teenagers i would i would i would let me start by at least speaking for those who to support it all let's see how we can support our teenagers teenagers our teenagers in this place teenagers means from 18 years if you are 19 you are not a teenager 18 years to 11 11 to 18 years some of our young people here is a thousand um thousand naira so please you can support him and um let's see how we can do so we'll pick i'll pick 50 copies huh? and let's give our teenagers this is this is to support him and to support our young people so if you know you are 11 to 18 years after the service you can behave like a responsible person go and stand at the pr uh, stand or wherever they would indicate for you please no collecting for your child if you are not a teenager just go home you can buy and give the person that is our gift to our teenagers to support them and god will not be happy with you when god raises someone to pay for a book and you carry it and go and throw it there i think if you carry the book or you just buy the book and drop it or you buy for your child and they drop it you have wasted your money so please our teenagers here if you pick this book go and sit down with another notebook and read it with all your heart and i'm sure you should be able to see him to ask a few questions lord we thank you for this we dedicate it in the name of jesus let this inspire a lot of other people who have visions but are afraid to take steps grace for them in the name of jesus we pray that you bless emmanuel we speak to this book we give it life we give it wings let it go far in the name of jesus may the lord bless you in jesus name god bless you i'm very proud of you praise the lord the lord put just one word in my heart for us tonight and then we'll pray just one word and then we'll pray as I prepared for this meeting, I sense that one of the things that the Lord will be doing is tonight to employ the power of prophecy. Prophecy is very powerful. I don't know how many times I will teach and encourage us believe in prophecy. Now there are imbalances here, there are exaggerations here, there are dabblings here and there, but you will be mistaken to ever want to rise ignoring the power of prophecy and as i explored the spirit of god took me to a scripture that blessed me so much just one scripture and then we'll pray hallelujah ezra chapter 6 hallelujah by the way wonderful wonderful testimonies how many of you were blessed by the testimonies remember that the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy that means that when you listen it puts faith in your heart and you commit god to reproduce the same result powerful testimony um and then for the gentleman to hear kai god eh? god has been good to us so i hope you know that koinonia honestly speaking sometimes we get used to these miracles we get used to you know my prayer every time is lord i know i'm the one you are using but may i never get used to your power it's easy coming here tonight my prayer is not oh god move mm -mm. my prayer is oh god bless your people i don't pray and say lord make sure your anointing works um that's that's not a wise prayer the issue is not for the anointing to work the issue is that it be done as it is in heaven exactly what god once delivered and i just sat down i said god you have been good to me and you have been good to us as a family of faith so i think it's a wonderful thing 
that I don't think we should take for granted. Praise the Lord. In all your ways, this is already a word for someone, in all your ways, sometimes we are very quick to see what God has not done. Yet the miracle is in thanking him for what he has done. The last gentleman, his testimony blessed me so much. He saw that his brother or his son or whatever had something had started. Many people say, God, I'm watching. And God will say, you won't see the rest because you are not a grateful person. Ten lepers were sent. They were healed. Only one returned back and said, Lord, I'm grateful. He said, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? And he said, you, you are whole. So learn, learn to acknowledge everything. If you tell God, give me 10 naira, and someone calls you and says, I will give you money, start thanking him. Don't say, Lord, it has not come. Lord, the fact that you can think about that. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Learn this. My entire life, 80% of my prayer is thanksgiving. There is what God does for you. You almost feel guilty asking for anything again. Are we together now? The grace of God. While I sat back there, I was just watching this. I said, my God. Now this gentleman, think of what his testimony will do to the salvation of someone. These are the kinds of testimonies that will force unbelievers to go and think. You can't hear this kind of testimony and pretend they are called notable miracles. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. Ah, God. What's that song? Menei da kasoni haka. Menei da kasoni haka. Where's the gentleman? He's not here. Menei da kasoni haka. Amreya figonia. Chizambara. Amreya figonia. Chizambara. It's a chant I like. of the Jews, listen, builded, and they prospered. How? Through the prophesyings of Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo. They prospered through the prophesying, not through building materials. They prospered. They were building while he was speaking. And the Bible says the secret of their prosperity was that there was the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. They said they built it and finished it. According to the commandment of the God of Israel, God commanded it, the prophets prophesied it, the men built it, and the building finished. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The Bible says they prospered not through the quality of their building materials. They prospered not just through the quality of their leadership. The Bible says they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet. They prospered through the prophesying. They were healed through the prophesying. Their lives changed through the prophesying. These were prophets I'm sure when the prophets spoke to them, they said, okay, let's watch to see what happens. But they forgot that God confirms the words of his prophets. When I found this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. So I can prosper through prophecy. I can prosper through prophecy. Prosperity there doesn't just mean to have money. It means to excel. It means to do well. 
that means my life can change you've heard me say it again and again that the prophetic is powerful when the prophetic is used accurately and within the context of its relevance there is no limit no limit to what it can produce very simple scripture tonight they build it so the bible is honest to tell us they were building but that the energy the spiritual factor responsible for that prophecy is not the dexterity of their building but through the prophesying not the prophecy the prophesying continual speaking not that he spoke once they didn't just prosper through his prophecy he's prophesying so he said in the name of jesus god bless you and they came back again we're building and he said you just build while i speak they prospered through the prophesying i have seen what prophecy can do the bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression the power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of ezekiel the bible lets us know that ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones listen carefully the bible says the bones were very dry not only very dry the bones were not together the fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available the bones were there they were out of sight but they were still in existence waiting for prophecy to bring them together are you getting what i'm saying for as long as a prophetic word did not come those bones remained there and then he says son of man can these bones leave he says only thou knowest and then he said prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded when god commands and you prophesy he confirms i prophesied not as i wanted not as i chose to but as i was commanded and the next thing that happened was there was a sound the bible says that shaking and bones began to look for themselves bones talk of structures structures son of man prophesy again to the four winds and say oh winds breathe upon this lane and he prophesied again as commanded and the bible declares that the wind came entered into these bodies without life and they arose an exceeding great army I believe with all my heart that's what God is going to do over someone's life. Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army. Something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry. Another incident, the Bible says that the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. And they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says he granted them permission. And while they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell. And one of the sons of the prophet said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. You thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? And he said, No, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick and against gravity the axe head began to float another time there was hunger in the land of samaria the hunger was so bad that the bible records that women were eating their children 
Nigeria has not gotten to that level. I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry. I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit. But that hunger will make a mother. Imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day. Two women. Remember that was the agreement. There was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything. Imagine the hunger. That means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a, a plate of food is not up to a child's head. Yet two people ate a whole child. Is that a normal hunger? No. And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman and she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. And say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said, abundance will come it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it notice that every time the prophets speak they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless they are called timeless possibilities possibilities with no time frame attached to them it is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation listen very carefully the realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility are made to find expression on earth it is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen are you getting what i'm saying now very powerful Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? Prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit like spiritual archaeologists exploring the height the width the depth of the ways of god 
and like archaeologists when we find something that we think is worthy of note we treasure it the bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl is that true and the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it the bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot that entire estate so we continue to search and the bible says everyone that seeketh finds if you are serious enough and desperate the spirit of revelation will come you will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual lord if you, if you will show me show me are you not god open my eyes let me see no you will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity you can discern diligence he is the rewarder of not them that seek him them that diligently seek him lord i won't let you go open my eyes show me the key i i, I admit that i don't know much but lord open my eyes and then the spirit of revelation comes the angel came and told daniel he said i am come to give you understanding daniel prayed and said i'm not leaving this place lord you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do 20 and one days he was there traveling and then the angel came granted him access to revelation and he said i daniel understood by books it was not just a book like opening to read are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes so the you must not only know what god has prepared for you you must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Alienated. That means that your life does not become a reflection of what God has said. And the Bible says it doesn't mean he lied, but that something about your life and my life, there is a level of understanding. Understanding of what? Not just an information, the ways of God. Are we together now? Please give me this. This is a bottle of water. Look up, please, everyone. This is a bottle of water. Now, it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if i open this bottle i'm going to have an enjoyable experience is that true now you have given me the bottle but there is a technology to open it if you turn this thing clockwise it will not open is that true the system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes as simple as this instruction is you can die of test not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle you can struggle turning this clockwise and then it will look like swan water scammed you whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding now notice that you can do this and go old doing it and a little child will come and say my daddy taught me come let me show you and just turn this and in two minutes the water is there for you to take it's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside as rich as you are have you ever lost your atm and you stand angry as rich as you are they just made a transfer and you are hungry the atm is looking at you you are looking at it the difference between you and your breakthrough is that atm imagine how small things cause big trouble small key atm that's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link you've done step a b c d step e which is the last step you may not know and stay there for 10 years until god by his mercy comes for some of you that last step is what you are getting tonight you have prayed 
you have fasted you have done what you need to do hannah went at shiloh the bible says hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and and the prophet looked at her and said i mean what kind of irresponsibility is this you are drunk in the temple and she said no my lord she was communicating her travail all had been set except prophecy we don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom we build as prophecies upon us they build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai are we together now and the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally it looks very simple I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly jokingly and I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed could this be the missing link that you have done what you know the shop is already there the goods are already there but for some strange reasons the customers do not come your certificate is already there the application has been submitted but you are building with intelligence you are building but the prophecy that will make that building finish the bible did not say they started building it says the building finished this is a secret that worked in my own life this is the secret that is working in this ministry they build and they finished through the power of prophecy I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy especially the creative dimension of prophecy that you can speak over someone's life you can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken let me tell you this you know I told you something anything that is a blessing is not tangible it's not physical whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing yes we say that you were blessed but the truth is you were supported blessings are always spiritual read your Bible you don't bless men with what money can buy you don't bless people with material things so I can give you money you say I bless you it's true but the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding the blessing is the favor that brought that money that's what you are giving so if you have the discernment when you go to the shop you drop the money not the favor your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave and the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that and he's surprised in two months he has opened another branch he doesn't know what happened whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor i jump from here by mistake i will fall gravity will not say no i'm aware he's joking it's an example no there are no examples with laws you don't swallow food and then the food says i won't reach your stomach i know you are i will i will come out when you know Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think, in the U.S. He said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums you would think that okay he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that and then this man will say okay come with everything you are building my job is to keep speaking while you build and you find out the buildings always get completed when you build while a voice is speaking it must finish the same way a voice was speaking while God was building God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build we get the raw materials 
and then we say based on this and that and that i will build this great destiny in the name of jesus we we can be well-meaning and then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise and you can't trace based on your architecture nothing is wrong that building is supposed to finish yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom we build and prosper through the prophesyings not just through intentions it was bishop Oyedepo who would share his experience with archbishop benson idahosa that he carried a seed you know he came and he was going to run an errand for him and he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him i hope i'm right with the story and then he opened you know a compartment full of money and then bishop Oedeko would not take and say no i don't want this and he looked at him and blessed him and he says from today god has given you the grace of on time that before a need arises the supplies are there now that's how to bless so he can now go and build because there is prophecy listen unbelievers know this they prepare their work together then they now go to dark powers and say i'm ready to build i'm ready for election i'm ready for this i'm ready for the scholarship i'm ready to build the business i have done everything i just returned from harvard with my certificate but i know that a body without a spirit is dead therefore let there be prophecy on it they carry that thing and they finish what they have started god is a finisher that means that when the hand of zerubbabel begins something that hand should complete it but the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do that system is largely not understood and tonight we are going to use one of those keys the power not of words there is a difference between words and prophecy words are utterances they are powerful on their own but prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was standing. Didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth, right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe they would induce or do something, or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out, like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy jesus went to the temple from age 12 he had been preparing and doing everything but at age 30 he went to look for a prophet and john said i won't baptize you jesus said you are joking suffer it to be so it's an ordinance it's a formula and when he came out of the water the heavens opened jesus the word was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens so the fact that you are carrying the world, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word 
for breakthrough. The word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews builded and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around to the prophesy. Shalakata prakato sedekaria. Make sure you are praying. the spirit come hold this for me no Ejimi, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living. So they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger when it delivers it returns back and says I have done what you sent me to do then he sends the word on errand again listen words are not just talkings because when Isaac listen blessed Jacob Esau came and said don't you have any other thing he said it is finished was the talking finished so words are not just speaking you are a boy yes you say that is word in english but in the realm of the spirit words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life so i can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger the courier system is called prophecy So you can the moment you see words coming to you you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know i i i do a lot of conga and jumia and sometimes they just call me and say we're within vicinity can we come and the moment i hear the sound of their van do i need the van do i need the package the package that comes will say conga i quickly open the package then there is another package i open everything till i get what i'm looking for that thing the van will return back because it needs to come back again but what it brought it is what stays with me many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking be blessed that thing is not the english it's just a word prophesied to you it transported something spiritual so when it enters your ears the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken. And then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you. And you say, Lord, when did that happen? 
That is why deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come. The entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand there. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes and you don't receive it. And it goes back. He sent forth his word. When they received the word, the word healed them. The word delivered them. So he sent forth healing. He sent forth deliverance. But they were carried in a tray called words. This is the mystery. Men receive. That's why when you see people talk about the word, word, most people, even those who teach it, they don't even really fully understand what they're saying. They think it is speaking that gives you intelligence. No. Words convey information. They convey thoughts. But that's not the only thing they do. They are mighty systems of impartation. Words. I can be sitting here right now and yet I'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me. The minister is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word so I can sit down and say Lord send me a word for my breakthrough and God will say that's it everyone that ask it receive it and he puts that word and you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus let doors be open and you say that's it you did not see that that word was carrying something you receive that word the miracle in it will start working you don't receive the healing you receive the word the healing was designed to work when the word is received when you enter a city jesus was teaching find out whether there be a house of peace when you find it there he says let what is on you rest there when you don't find anybody that receives you let your peace rest with you meaning there are things that rest return are received are rejected these are some of the things that govern the results that we get look at the wonderful that adorable lady that shared her testimony from lagos words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and hiv of 24 years when the word gets to hiv HIV is a spirit, so it knows it's not words that it's seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and ah, you see not this guy, this this 33-year-old body is fooling people. This is not 33-year-old, this is the ancient of days. He been in a 33-year-old body, but men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb. You will think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, Oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, Where are you seeing this? Because the world is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. 
I see it. The word is received. The power, as many as received that word, he gave them power that came with the word to become. Power to become. As many as received him, even to them that called upon his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become an apostle. Power to become a prophet. Power to become prosperous. Power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down. Power to silence the voices of darkness. Thank you. This is how fathers blessed throughout the Bible. All the sons knew that they didn't, they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep. They gave them those things, but they knew it was temporal. But the moment they received something on their head, the fathers told them bye-bye and never cared to find out, are you doing well? Because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together. Let me tell you, if someone counts, come, Sam, come, this lady. If this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates, huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea, you gave them gifts, not a blessing. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. They will carry those things and somebody can steal it. But when you speak over their lives, those words remain and start working. So this guy was supposed to fail. Remember, when he gets to the place where he wants to fail, that word is a spiritual buffer. It starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble. There was supposed to be trouble. Ordinarily, he would have been a victim. But something that was on him will move him. The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. There is something that you can receive. And when there is a job that is your own, you find yourself moving there. You are not moving. Something is moving you there. This is what creates favor in life. It looks like a repetition of coincidences. Everything good that is about to happen, you call them, they say, I just heard about it. Must you hear about everything good? Then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it. The same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come. Someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys. And say, what is, is it that I'm not beautiful? It's not about beauty. It's about what happened. That's why the Bible says God can deliver men from six things. Yes, seven things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That men can use words to program something on you and just say, go. Now, you will, because you didn't feel anything, that word remains. This gentleman is standing here. He's supposed to marry her, but something on her is fighting him. You are supposed to get a job. The person promised heaven and said, and just a signature to get that job. But something on you, make sure that your paper is taken away from the list. This is what we came to correct tonight. That by the power of prophecy, that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen. Someone can look at you and say, man of God, you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate. When did you get born again? And you say, it's not my fault. It's what is on me. Something on me draws the right people. And you find out, listen, listen. That's why you find out there are churches. You always find the right keyboardist, the right drummer, they are looking for pastors. You find the right pastors. And it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them. There is a spirit. Somebody enters that town and says, I want to come and fellowship with Koinonia. They didn't just come. The day you are announcing your book, that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city. He didn't just come. Something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build 
but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it. Listen, remember you can't get to the office. But there's something that can get there. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. And that word will rest on your employment letter. And the, the man is pushing everything. And he just picks yours. Now remember, the man may not be born again. So he can't explain what is happening. Because he operates in the three-dimensional realm. The word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man. And because he's empowered by God's integrity, he must hear it. And he looks and says, who is this? What tribe? Ah, I... The slot is for five people from the north. Who is this Yoruba girl now? Who knows? Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother. And they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, What is this again? If you don't believe this, then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering. Where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squalor that comes upon arrogant people you see people that you think don't deserve it but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them are we together in the bible every time fathers were releasing their children they would tell them place your hand upon my thigh and they would place their hand and speak speak over their lives and say i've finished go whoever comes again they say the word has finished I can talk to you i can counsel you but if it's that thing you are looking for it has finished do you believe what i'm sharing with you because we are going to be very very fast tonight and i want you to believe the moment words are coming don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system they are spirits you have to discern it they are spirits oh may god lift you it's not just by shouting amen may god lift you so the word is coming with a grace for lifting you receive the word but you are searching where is the grace and that grace is on you you go expecting to be lifted it's as if life owes you lifting because there is a word there and you will be surprised to see the way things just open are you ready to pray find a corner in the next two three minutes i like you to declare declare and pray please pray take it seriously the things that must shift in your life the things that must change in your life is called a miracle service especially for those of you who came from far please believe Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough.
to me. We are going to start praying shortly. I forgot to tell you that words are also erasers in the spirit. That there are handwritings. There are ordinances that are written upon men like a stigma, like a karagma. The mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother. And Jabez said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. It's not my fault that I came from this family. Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are bought by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase crosses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray and say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams, bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross. of you almost everybody here uses one or more social media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one, two, three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again and God is saying no Lazarus must come back home you must find it again before I begin to pray open your mouth whatever left me that should not leave me you must return back opportunities dimensions in the spirit
Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cooperate with me. I want us to finish very fast. And so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time. But I want you to please believe. Are we together? Words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life. Was it not because Jonah entered a boat? Innocent people on a voyage. A man carried something. Entered their boat. They lost properties. Lost. They were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution. He didn't say, counsel me. Throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch. You don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements. You must carry them. And say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my... By the spirit of might. In the name of Jesus. That you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God. That within the next few minutes. Visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual. But Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three, my God. I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now in the name of jesus everything in your life that must leave i declare right now by the power that is in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two three the roadside online i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost the word of god brings every evil from out of their hiding place i declare and i prophesy i send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family into every destiny and i declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of god tonight Therefore, I declare judgment, judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, judgment upon the wicked, judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors listen over life if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open no matter what you do something is about to happen to you now lift your hands father i declare anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors shakatabata now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of jesus i judge that spirit one two three shout jesus I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances that close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside, be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak, those chains that I see, Sakotos Katabarakato Jetia, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare 
anyone being tied down by any chain i declare right now let the fire of the for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi state Kogi state you know what happens when God shows me this that means people from that state the power of God begins to touch them right now in the name of Jesus I declare the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming to this state. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing right here. I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus let the yokes of darkness the ordinances of witchcraft let it be broken right now let it be broken right now for sick people now but i'm seeing the lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now i declare anyone who has those experiences i stretch my hands now i stretch my hands now the lord is saying i should stand here in the name of jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, and the Kalakata Katakata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare that devil must let you go. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, be set free in the name of Jesus. All those in front, I declare the count of three. The spirits that manifested 
must let you go. I speak as one sent from God. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Out of their lives and out of their destinies. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many people are trusting God for jobs? You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's called not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are designed to receive miracle jobs. Do these impartations. Where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Sebahasha. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven, is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you coming? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams dreams yes. that's what i'm saying dead people yes, you I see dead them. people in dreams i have seen them this is what i'm saying if you did not come here i saw that you were somewhere around pz and a car just came you're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you that's how they left you on the ground there but in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit behind why am i saying god is saving families from the spirit of death i just saw like an arrow right now any family here any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ fruit of death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. I pray with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. You have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. What wonders. In the name of Jesus, let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, accept the people speak to you and I would please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not a person that is laying hands on me. There's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering, but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this, I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God.
to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol. Please join the people so that we make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. And as we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, there is healing in your name.
the Lord. Please make sure if you have not submitted your prayer request, do it very quickly. Do it very quickly. We'll pray one prayer point before you continue. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every delayed promise say it again that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month lift your voice and pray 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 delayed promise Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? and by the time it exceeds it becomes an issue of concern and then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through cs it doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive lord i declare it is time for me to walk in it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of god has made available i step into Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you Halato shake take take it bala I bow my knees that he may grant unto you Shekete parus visit impossible situations O God of heaven In the name 
name of Jesus Christ father I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery father I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve things that if we see with the eyes of men it will even challenge our faith my God surprise everyone please agree with me surprise everyone in the name of Jesus Christ let every need represented here whatever that need is I agree right now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God let every need here be turned into a miracle any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered may the fire of judgment come upon them now remember all blessings come from God through men to you all blessings live from Satan through men away from you all blessings come from God through men to you all blessings live from Satan through men so whether it's from God or from Satan men play a role I say it again in the name of Jesus everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role to sabotage what God has answered what he has done in your life let the fire of judgment rest upon them now let me give you an instance if God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you you know what that man has done he didn't just kill you he stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family I'm saying it again any human agent if you don't like it just say amen to the one you believe but any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life may the word of God rest like fire upon them when a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years the guy to help joseph came out and forgot him for two years it was after two years by the mercy of god he said i remember my wrong so he acknowledged it was wrong i pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you may they remember their wrong and may they correct it anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life your ministry right now and by some activity of darkness it has not yet touched your head I declare may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now I taught you about words never forget words are trace God is serving you something he's only using words are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again don't say you have said it before remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying not once Jesus your Jesus Touch the eyes of a man and he said what do you see this is the word touching a man's eyes he said I'm seeing but I see men like trees Jesus said nonsense he touched his eyes again and he saw men clearly if he if he was left like that listen we want to we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family. That in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I curse that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job, I don't care how long you have waited, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. Lord is showing me a medical doctor 
that an appointment is coming from, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus, from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood sucking spirit will curse you. Pray. We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos, peace in Adamawa, peace in Benue. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love. The spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers. That together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? Passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of these who are matured believers. We must have the wisdom to be able to respond. This is not about Christians. It's not truly about Muslims. It's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of god so the issue is not just about christians it's not just about muslims and all of this my perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being regardless of religion acts wicked on his own accord they are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds so when we challenge the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal so we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit these are the spirits that can use anybody if brothers kill brothers then anybody can kill anybody when the spirits are at work our responsibility as believers at, is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulates the destinies of people number two please there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, 
and we we will continue to pray and speak peace he says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by god's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligent system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the lord let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope while we continue speaking life let me balance this because if if god forbid but if i die today it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of god for the saints so on one side while you weep and mourn for what has happened the word of god is bigger than any man i'm saying this because sometimes satan uses these things to discourage the body of christ let god be true and every man including the best of us be a liar so make sure you continue to stand on your convictions be sympathetic to people don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people but maintain your stand and your convictions about the integrity of what god has said should be are we together now i speak to everyone here the covenant of protection you have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of i declare in the name of jesus the grace that has protected us the grace that has protected this this ministry may that grace speak in your life i forbid the earth nor the sword from receiving your body in the name of jesus christ i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land so all i want is you i hunger and thirst i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land for all I want is you. Is that your prayer tonight? Is that your desire in this place? We hunger and thirst for you. In the dry and weary land. All we want is you. Let that be a song from your spirit. Just the voices, I like you to sing it from your heart. We hunger and we thirst. We hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All we want is you. Sing it from your heart. I hunger and I thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you. Dry and we relax. Oh, oh, all I want is you. All I want is you. All I want is you. You are my life. You are my breath. You are everything I want. You are all that I see. You're all that's in my world. I love your word and I love your life. I live by your word. I live by your word. 
You are the hunger and the thirst inside of me. I'll spend my days seeking your presence. I'll spend my life running after you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. With everything I have. With everything I have. With everything I have. This is a piece of my passion for you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I'll save you. I love you more than life itself. I truly love you. I love your way. I love your presence. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I love you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I love your presence. Holy Spirit, you are my life. You are my bread. You are my joy. You're my song in the night. You're my song in the day. You're my song in the night. You're the reason why I live. You're the reason why I preach. You're the reason why I heal. You're the reason why I sing. You're the reason why I serve you. Maria ma sheba na na ye na ma kaya na na sheba ya na 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 na. As the day passes for the world, so my soul longs after you. So my soul longs after you. I love you more than life itself. I can never do without you, Lord. Hallelujah. I worship you. Listen to this song. With all my heart. With all my heart. I worship you with all my heart. I don't know if you really love the Lord. Let's raise our voices together as a very simple song. Hey, I worship you with all my heart. With all Come on, sing it from your heart. Worship you. I worship you with all my heart. With all my heart. Sing, I worship you. I worship you. This is part of the meeting. This is part of going on here. Lord, we worship you. I worship you with all my heart. Can you hold your hands together and lift it up together as a family? I like us to sing and say, Lord, we worship you. We worship you with all our heart. Please sing it from your heart. We are not pretending. This is our testimony that we love the Lord. We worship you with all our heart. Just the voices. We worship you. Sing it with all our hearts. We know this is our testimony, oh Lord. This is our testimony, Lord. We love you. We are that generation, oh God. We will not disappoint destiny with all our hearts. 
we are that remnant that will come out of the house of Jacob one more time we worship you the training must be hard it may be hard but we will go through it the making of general with all our hearts one more time as you hold the hands of your neighbor a fellow general in the army sing it from your heart is the anthem of the great one we worship you can you just sing in the spirit still holding the hands of your neighbor expressing your love to his majesty we love your presence oh god we are not just looking to get things from you we love you we love you we love you lord with everything we have with everything we are we love you lord come on sing in the spirit that we love you that we love you hallelujah Lord, we love you. Yes, Lord, we love you. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you, Lord. You're singing it to your maker. Lord, I will worship you nothing hands has made but you lord sing i will lay down my idol i will lay down my idol clothes i have made and all that i've taken my heart sing it from your heart to the lord Lord, I will bow to you, to no Hallelujah. Listen to me. When I began my pursuit for God, listen, I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for prosperity I was not looking for fame I was not looking for influence I was not even looking for anointing I was not looking for title I was looking for his presence I wanted his presence more than my life I wanted his presence more than anything when I began to pursue him I didn't give him conditions to serve him I told him, I said, Lord, if you will never bless me, I cannot leave you. We have conditional Christians. Lord, if you do this for me, I will do that. But one of the blessings of Koinonia is that you come to a point 
where you say lord i lift away the conditions i love you i love you the language of love for god is not a language that is understood by the body again we teach on faith we teach on mercy we teach on goodness but we do not teach on our love and our passion there is need to restore a passion for god i don't know what you look for every time you come for koinonia miracles anointing but tonight can you renew your passion for his presence Oyedeko said, if you want to know the secret of my success, find out my heartbeat for God. A.W. Tozer wrote in his book, The Pursuit for God. He said, the highest, singular, noble cause of any man is to pursue God. As the deep panted for the waters of my soul, Longs after you. Make sure you are thinking of what you are singing. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Listen to me. Let me give you a revelation of this song so that you understand what the psalmist was saying. Hallelujah. The deer is a very fragile animal. Are you listening to me? Doesn't have so much strength of its own. It's a great prey to the lions and other stronger animals. Now listen to me. Very important. And every time there is a secretion from the deer that attracts the presence of the predators and the animals that come to eat it up are you listening to me and the only place of rescue is if it can get to the waters are you listening to me and so for the deer water is a matter of life and death this is why the psalmist is saying as the deer pants he's not looking for the water because he's thirsty he's looking for the water as a matter of life and death Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth to it and they are saved. So as you are singing and say as the deer, you are comparing your pursuit for God to the deer's pursuit for water. If you don't mean it, don't sing it. That as the deer pants after the water, so my soul pants after the water. For you Oh Lord, ah my heart, desire and my love to worship you. You, oh Lord, ah my heart, desire and I long to worship you. It's a very simple song. I don't know if you know it. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I love to praise. I bow before you. I bow before you, lifting you high, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. To praise, I bow before you, lifting you high for the last time. Hey, I love to worship, I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high. Hallelujah. Lord, let 
your word bless us tonight we have come to receive we have come to be changed let your word bless us in the name of Jesus I pray hallelujah just hug your neighbor and be gloriously seated hallelujah may the Lord bless you for coming he will increase you and he will cause you to walk in glory in the name of Jesus Joel chapter 2 please bring out your writing materials it's important that you come with your writing materials because you will need to write a lot of things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of Glory. Lord, we love you. Joel chapter 2. If you are there, say Amen. Verse 4. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoreth the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk every man on his part. They shall walk every man on his part. He said they shall walk every man on his part tonight's teaching is very important it changed my life years ago when the Lord opened my eyes to this revelation and I pray that it will change somebody's life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah tonight I'm teaching on a very powerful subject walking in your purpose walking in your purpose walking in your purpose the Bible begins to give us in the book of Joel a description of a great army and the Bible makes us to understand that this army they were like mighty men they leaped upon walls hallelujah the Bible says that every one of them none broke their rank that every one of them walked in his path who are these men this class of fearful people hallelujah every one of you say after me i was born for a reason say it as loud as you can i was born for a reason i am not a biological accident i'm not one of the many people in the earth I was born for a reason I have an assignment I have a mandate I have an anointing I have a destiny the world is full of people who found themselves in the middle of time didn't know why they were born and they die without discovering why they came upon the surface of the earth there is nothing as tragic as a man who lives upon the surface of the earth without knowing the reason why he was born and what he was mandated to do upon the surface of the earth take this very seriously purpose and destiny Tonight, I trust that God will open up our eyes and grant us the ability to walk in the path 
of our call, the part of our anointing, and the part of destiny. Say amen if you believe that. Many of you have been praying and saying, Lord, why am I here? Am I just here to escort others in destiny? The Lord has heard your prayer tonight. And that's why I want you to be very attentive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the word purpose means the intention for creating or manufacturing a thing. When you say the purpose of a thing, the intent, the reason why you manufactured that product please if you're not writing you can kindly ask your neighbor to help you with a sheet of paper or use the notepads on your phone just make sure you are writing this is very important hallelujah so the purpose of a thing is the reason for its existence the reason why it came are you listening to me everything god is a god of purpose say after me god is a god of purpose yes he does not create anything for nothing god is a god who is driven by purpose and everything he creates is supposed to serve a reason these amplifiers these these speakers are supposed to serve a purpose the mic i'm holding is serving a purpose are you listening to me the video camera is serving a purpose the projector is serving a purpose the worship team they are serving a purpose so the purpose of a thing is the reason for its creation the reason for its manufacturing hallelujah it's important that we realize that god didn't just create man listen to me to walk upon the surface of the earth get old get married give birth to children go to church go to the university earn degrees and die that's a terrible testimony and that's the testimony of many people many people there are so many young people even in nigeria they do not understand the purpose of their lives they do not realize that they did not appear on the earth as a biological accident i don't care how you were born are you listening to me it's irrelevant how you came into being the most important thing is that you are here now hallelujah it's important for you to find the original assignment and the intention of God for your life. Do you realize that every one of us has an assignment earmarked by God? It has been predetermined. Let me tell you something about purpose. Purpose is not the same as ambition. Ambition is your desire. Are you listening to me? What you aspire to become by reason of your likes, by reason of um, your environment and whatever parameters you use purpose is the intention that God put in your heart to serve here in the earth realm when he shot you as an arrow from eternity into time he packaged you for a reason I need you to understand that you don't create your purpose you discover it you don't create purpose let me show you Hebrews chapter 10 turn with me quickly to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 if we can get it on the amplified that will be okay otherwise any version Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 who is there Hebrews 10 verse 7 lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will listen he said then i said behold here i am coming to do your will O god to fulfill what is written of me in the volume of the book to fulfill what what is written it has been written you don't come and walk here on the earth 
and then one day god just chooses and says, uh hey, what do we do with bridget now and then god just oh yeah you just manage here no lo i come as it is written of me say after me it has been written concerning my life that's why i know you cannot be a failure god cannot write failure about you the bible says lo i come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me the day you find yourself in the book you begin to walk in the path of destiny hallelujah can i tell you something one definition of frustration in life is to walk void of the knowledge of your assignment you will waste energy you will waste resources are you listening to me we used to play um a little game during break when i was in primary school now primary school children play computer games during break time but we used to play a game i don't know how many of you did it you people will walk around and you come i pass here and what will you say i pass here that's how many people are doing in destiny they just get everywhere i like technical i pass here and life will say what no way hallelujah and there are so many people escorting others to the place of destiny god designed that you find fulfillment when you begin to walk in your purpose are you listening to me your joy is in your purpose your peace is in your purpose your prosperity is in your purpose your fame and your influence is in your purpose and the danger is this if you do not find it you will live your life getting offended and angry at those who have found it because you will aspire to become what they already are but you will find out that the road you are taking will always end you up in frustration one more time say after me i was born for a reason i was born for a reason many of you as you are saying it you are laughing at yourself you say me too yes you in luke chapter 4 from verse 17 the bible makes us to understand that jesus do you realize listen to me that jesus was a non-entity until the day he found his purpose is in your bible there was no there was no proof that jesus was an important person that people loved him and valued him until the day when he found something luke chapter 4 you remain a non-entity in life i don't care who you are i don't care how fine you are i don't care who your father is luke chapter 4 verse 17. hallelujah are you there can someone read it for us please he said and there was handed to him the role of the book of the prophet isaiah he said he opened the book and found the place hey and found where the place there is a place for you and he found the place he didn't say he found a place he opened the book in the opening of the book he did what he found the place the place there is the place it's not a place for many people it's not a place for competition you know why there's so much competition because many people are trying to be what a few people who have found their purpose have become and the best you can become of another person is a second class of that person your originality is manifested when you find the place next verse verse 18 this is what jesus found the spirit of the lord is upon me hmm. for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed who are downtrodden bruised crushed 
and broken down by calamity next verse 19 to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord the day when salvation and the free favors of god profusely abound verse 20 listen to what jesus said and he rolled up the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue were gazing attentively at him 21 and he began to speak to them and said what today your today starts when you discover purpose many of you are celebrating birthday how many how old are you 35 all right that's nice but your today has not started until you begin to walk in purpose he said today this scripture has been fulfilled in other words i am come as a fulfillment of this prophecy what prophecy are you fulfilling your work upon the earth is supposed to be a fulfillment of a prophecy are you listening to me what prophecy are you fulfilling for many of us all that we desire is to just say lord bring a man now to marry me am i not getting old and we believe that that is all to our lives but i want you to know that there is more say there is more say i was born for a reason yes you are. jeremiah chapter one let's look at what god had to tell jeremiah jeremiah chapter one from verse four jeremiah chapter one from verse four are you getting blessed tonight jeremiah chapter one then the word of the lord came to me jeremiah saying now this was jeremiah he was a great prophet born to be a great prophet jeremiah brought the lamentations and caused the nation of israel to walk in the path of the lord but he did not know that that was his divine destiny in christ until it was revealed to him verse 4 okay verse verse 4 please then the word of the lord came to me saying verse 5 before i formed you can we read it together I want to read before i formed you in the womb i knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument and before you were born i separated you and set you apart consecrating you and i appointed you as a prophet to the nations he said what before your father and your mother came together you see why i say you are not a biological accident because i don't care who your father is and who your mother is and how you came mm -mm. he said before you were formed in your mother's womb he said i knew you oh he knows my name that's what the bible says he knows my every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears me when brother do you realize that before you were born it has been written concerning you in other words heaven met come on let me have somebody just anybody let me have somebody bridget god bless you that means when it was time for bridget to come upon the earth the holy spirit didn't just go on an errand and suddenly he just found out that our ah, bridget is coming and they say hey what do we do let her just come we'll find something no no it was well calculated by heaven they created a vacuum in the earth and planted bridget to be the solution that prophecy to reveal that dimension of god and they said now you can go and she appeared but let me tell you something your coming upon the earth does not mean that you are going to walk in purpose you must discover it hallelujah Years ago, I carried my Bible, I carried my jota, and I ran to the dam, ABU dam. Many of you only go there for picnic. We didn't go there for business. Destiny discovering business. And you go there, I will buy buns and yogurt, 30 naira, and buns. And I will sit down there and flog it out with destiny. 
and say lord i cannot be a non-entity there's got to be something about my life my father didn't tell me what i was born for did your father tell you what you were born for i hope you will tell your children what they were born for because it's the responsibility of every father before you get your wife pregnant sit down and say lord what am i doing who is coming what is his destiny that's what manoah did he called the angel he said come and tell us what will be the destiny of this child and what we are supposed to do and he said he shall be a nazarene let no razor touch his head he shall be a judge over the house of israel hallelujah so when you realize that you were born for a reason it will change your outlook about life suddenly do you know that everyone was created with inferiority complex by default i don't care whether your father is the president of this country i have seen great people with inferiority complex i've seen beautiful ladies handsome guys with inferiority complex i've seen millionaires with inferiority complex inferiority complex can be tried to solve you can try to solve it with different things but only your purpose kills it once and for all so you don't solve inferiority complex by prayer you solve it by discovery are you listening to me when you find your place that i have a place in life and that you have discovered it and you will walk in that path hallelujah how many of you believe that you have a purpose in christ how many of you believe you have an assignment this discovery helps you because many of us have role models that are not in the area of our purpose and we are struggling and sweating i must be a fashion designer the grace is not there it's not part of your job description in destiny and you are suffering and sweating i must be this thing you are trying and somebody comes to work with ease with the grace that came upon his life are you listening to me there are many of you i must do music this music is selling i must do it nobody is buying your album there are no helpers there are no partners no errands and all to hold your hand you are suffering nobody likes what you are doing you are saying i must still that's the one i want tonight i want you to know that your place in life is not determined by you it's determined by god so outside of god there is no discovery of purpose there is only ambition Are you listening to me the bible says he opened the book and he found his place without the opening of the book you will never find your place in life there are so many people that have been crying lord what am i here for let me tell you something the danger of complex is unimaginable if you think this message is not important wait until you get out of this place and you will see how confused your life will be today you want to be like your brother tomorrow you want to be like this person this swaying life purpose gives you stability hallelujah very quickly how do i discover my assignment how do i discover my purpose now that you know you were born for a reason i know that many of you have heard it born for a reason born for a reason but it has not dawned on many of you that you should discover the specifics about your life don't say i'm too young joash was age eight when he became the king of israel number one to discover your purpose There are certain parameters that God has put together. Number one, your potentials. Say after me, potentials. The word potential comes from the word potent. That means it's inherent. An ability that has not been tapped yet. Hallelujah. Your potential is a pointer to your purpose. It's a pointer to your assignment. 
your potentials are inherent abilities make sure you write the word inherent they are not gotten by impartation you came with it hallelujah listen look up please there are some of you here from the day you were born from the day you were born as a baby every time you hear music as a little child you just go and stand close to the tv and if they want to take you away you are crying hallelujah from age seven you started singing in children's choir you were the youngest here they couldn't stop you your parents refused that you would not go for riaza the moment they were stopping you one uncle came and said lie lie i used to go and set the sound in the church i'll be taking the person every time you turn towards that area destiny seems to open up doors for you potentials hallelujah from young the leadership mandate not just ministry mandate not just apostolic mandate. everywhere i went in my life i was a leader there are some of you like that class monitor class one two three four five you are the last one in your family but your father will call you and say we're about to make a decision what do you think is making him do that hmm. are you listening to me potential your inherent ability your inherent ability given by god many of you have seen it is glaring before you every day what are your potentials don't say i don't have any are you joking let me list some of them for you it will shock you because many of you do not think they are called potentials there are some of you that are exceptionally beautiful ladies what do you think that is potential do you know in the book of esther the nation of israel was saved by the potential of beauty there was no prophet that prophesied anything there there was no man of god that turned snake into a rod or and it was a the beauty of a woman took her to the palace are you listening to me and she obtained favor and brought salvation to the nation of israel what of your creativity there are some of you who are so creative you have a thousand ways of doing the same thing are you listening to me creativity very important music for some of you when we are suffering to train our voice drinking ginger and honey you take cold water you break all the rules of music but you sing well you pitch to a point that you even you you are surprised let me tell you one proof that is your potential there is ease and grace in that area there is no struggling you like it so much even if they don't pay you you do it with joy while others are crying you cannot believe that they are crying about this thing hallelujah every time you see jimmy and and um assistant music director david every time you see them give them one minute they are playing a new song and you see them laughing i get so bored with what they are doing but you see them nodding i mean they are just enjoying it he said have you had this i just had this recent download by by um john picky and they are playing and dancing you know and just enjoying themselves and are leaping i'm saying can these guys get out of here there are many of you when you are about to sleep and they just tune to a fashion channel you just wipe sleep from your eyes and you can sit down till the next day while we are sleeping then when they tune Benny Hinn, I'm watching, I'm happy, I'm laughing. You are angry because I'm not giving you room to tune to the channel. You are like, what is it? Benny Hinn, such a boring man. You are my hiding place. Yes, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Listen, I hope you are getting my point. There are many of you from the day you came to ABU. You love your class. Even when you finish exam, you just go and sit down there and you are smiling. And your colleagues listen 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 your colleagues do not even understand are you listening to me you have started becoming ashamed they've called you everything bookworm prof it's not like you like it you can't stop it even when you are about to sleep after 10 minutes you just touch your hook and just use your touch 
and glance through something briefly before you close it and your roommate is saying this guy is frustrating us could it be that there is a voice in prison crying inside of you wanting to find expression there are many of you who are leaders when you were age five you were behaving as if you were 15 years old when your colleagues are playing you sit down and be thinking like this your father will say what kind of stupid boy are you your colleagues are playing eating sand and he said daddy no we can't eat sand and your father is saying jesus christ i be this guy is the incarnate of one elderly man you see a small have you seen little children like that very matured something touches their clothes and they are even cleaning it and they are careful you want to go and bath them at age three or four they are saying no say just wait outside you are like what in the world is happening to this generation potential your ability are you listening to me your first assignment tonight is write the list of all your potentials write it i wrote it hallelujah i knew i had the call of god upon my life i didn't know how it was going to start and when god was teaching me this all of this drama happened in the dark god told me write it i said singing oh then i had a beautiful voice i had not laid it as opportunity cause for ministry i had a beautiful voice hallelujah but you can't serve two masters at the same time hallelujah that's why god brought a beautiful worship team if you preach the way i'm doing your voice cannot be smooth hallelujah and i wrote singing and then i wrote teaching oh i love teaching i love teaching i can sit down do you know i was so obsessed about teaching i will soon reveal many of your secrets to you i will lock myself sometimes in the room and you imagine yourself teaching how many of you and you teach so well and now my own is not teaching in class or teaching the world and I'm teaching and I imagine myself talking to people and I tell you as I'm doing it the anointing of God comes truly as if God is not playing say if you like be playing you are doing rehearsal do you know this is how I learned how to preach I would stand at the foundation we had one empty foundation in our house they wanted to start a construction they're very and I'll stand and I'll imagine a crowd of people and I'll tell them turn with me to the book of this little did I know I was killing the bear and the lion in the wilderness Many of you, every time you are in your room, you just lock your room and put two chairs. And you say, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are on to ministry today. Aha. Uh -huh. Many of you are saying, hey, it's not word of knowledge. It's word of wisdom. I know it should happen to you. Hallelujah. And you have passion. Every time you tell your roommates, they laugh at you. But there is something crying inside of you. The next thing, your passion your passion your passion what is it that you would do if you were not paid there are many of you that love some things it's not the issue of money there are things in my life that i do with passion for instance what i'm doing oh boy i can preach till tomorrow morning i tell you if i'm tired it's just for your sake i can preach till morning once you make a mistake of giving me this mic even if you don't give me a bible god recorded small of it in my head and that one that i have i will preach it out sometimes when i'm going for night vigil people just pity me i say are you joking i'm enjoying myself seriously the exact same feeling you receive in the kitchen is what i'm receiving now hallelujah passion what do you have passion for do you realize that many of you are doing things you don't have passion for you are angry you are frustrated stop it you must not do it you are doing it because you belong to friends who are doing it hallelujah stop frustrating yourself and begin to pursue the areas that you have passion because there is grace there the last point discovering your purpose steps to discover your purpose the last point is the place of your pain and your anger the place of consistent pain and anger everywhere you keep receiving consistent pain and anger 
there is an assignment there for you are you listening to me moses the the grace for a deliverer was upon him and when he saw that his people were being oppressed what happened he was angry to a point that he killed a man later in the years he would be the deliverer of those people there are things that make me angry i hate it when i see that people do not love god i hate it when people disrespect god and don't have a passion for the things of the spirit i hate it when people do not live by the principles of the kingdom i hate it when satan oppresses people i hate seeing sick people i hate poverty i hate poverty with my life i hate the effect it has created on people i hate the effect that on society my anger my pain many of you have been rejecting your pain will you go back and revisit your pain right now when you were young you were abused when you were age 12 you were ab you hate men you hate everybody would it be that there is an assignment for you there are you listening to me there are many of you who just sit down and you get concerned about people's relationship even if it's not your business they have insulted you you are tired you have gone to repent before god but you find yourself there again could it be that you have the grace to be a life coach to help people hallelujah there are many of you when you were born anything they give you you give it out anything they give you sweet you are crying but you give somebody else and your mother will call you and slap your head and say oh lord i'm i'm training a dull child and you cannot even help it could it be that you are a kingdom financier could it be that there is grace for you to release and equip the body your pain what have you gone through in life do you think it's a waste are you listening to me your pain has grace let me tell you something about pain every time you conquer a situation in the spirit authority is given unto you to bring others out so moses feels the pain and the tragedy that's why see i went many of you don't know why i i i trust god and contend for the anointing for miracles and to heal the sick i went to have shared with you the challenge i had look i've gone through sickness in this my life many of you say what kind of yeah and nah, every time miracles it's not your fault the day you are sick and the doctor tells you they cannot do anything about your situation you will see the relevance of what we are doing hmm. hallelujah grace your pain can become the testimony so write your pain what are the things you have gone through in life that you are angry about this is a workshop tonight make sure you are writing please what are the things you've gone through there are many of you who you have suffered inferiority you have suffered complex to a point that you don't know what to do with yourself again could it be that you are sent as a deliverer to many like you hallelujah Where are the next Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, the next world changers who will take this kingdom for the king? Your purpose. Have you discovered your purpose? I read that book by Dr. Miles Munro, Discovering Your Potentials. It changed my life forever. I started getting angry with my life and I said, Lord, I cannot be like this. I cannot be like this. I gave myself a time space that I must discover why I'm on earth. I refused to celebrate my birthday. I told myself until I discover my call. There are many of you, you have the biggest party and you don't know why you are on earth. One year before your birthday, you have started planning. As soon as you finish this one, you are, you are planning the next one you you handle drinks 
you you handle the hotel we are booking and you have no idea while you are dancing whether it's christian or secular that's not my business so long as you do not you have no right to celebrate your birthday until you have discovered why you are living there are many guys that don't know what they're on earth for and your eyes will not allow ladies to move peacefully any lady you look you are just smiling do you not realize that she's supposed to be a help me when you are going out with her where are you going to where we are going out ahead to where do you know where you are going take what i'm saying seriously tonight do you know where you are going hallelujah the first thing god did is to reveal his assignment in the garden then when adam began to walk god saw a need for eve guys if you have not discovered your purpose i tell you relationship will kill you because you will not have direction a day will come there's nothing to talk about again you have talked about all the cartoons you have talked about the ladies hair what else do you talk about the lady keeps asking you questions you cannot answer so where are we going so i can start planning my life in light of where you are showing me and you say let's just be going even abraham god told him let's go hallelujah discovering your potentials listen when you discover your potentials in it you will find your uniqueness this is the secret of self-confidence your uniqueness is not in your similarity with others i mean your 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 greatness in life is not in your similarity i'm not the only preacher in the world but there's nobody that does it like me i have my way of doing my thing hallelujah i have found my place in the ministry i'm fulfilled in finding my place i'm exploring the paths that god has earmarked for me many ministries are frustrated because they do not have vision they don't have purpose and so they are trying to do everything that's why you see all kinds of people today they are apostles tomorrow they are prophets later on they say kai is it that i may revangel himself i'm not very sure they are everything you tell him what are you, you say i'm a multi-talented minister what is the meaning of that hallelujah you find people in life let me tell you something you cannot be everything many of you have written what you want to do and what you want to do is what the whole world will be doing you will die you better cancel it and find out what god wants you to do say i was born for a reason listen to me you are sitting down to, to listen to me by grace because i discovered my potentials are you listening to me can we sit down tomorrow and listen to you because you have discovered your potentials when i was in the dam crying and praying there was nobody nobody was calling me apostle or joshua selman or whatever but i knew that that discovery held the key to the fulfillment of my life i tell you i live a fulfilled life i've not started the journey yet but i'm enjoying the fulfillment to be in the heart and the center of what god wants me to do no competition that's why i don't have enemies in my life when i said are you joking your enemies are the people you have been trying to you are angry because they are walking in their path and then you are you are wondering what to do with your own life and every time you see them their zeal frustrates you because they are committed to do some things and you are wondering why am i not having that same kind of zeal when you find out your assignment i tell you you will not sleep because of it hallelujah when you discover your potentials when you discover your abilities they are pointers to your destiny although discovery and revelation is progressive but when you have the tools it begins to guide you are you listening to me it begins to guide you if you see someone holding a stethoscope who is that you cannot say that's a carpenter are you listening to me a carpenter has nothing to do with a stethoscope when you see someone holding a scissors holding needle and thread who is that person 
That's a tailor. Is that a caterer? So when you begin to gather your tools, what happens? It begins to give you direction. When you put those tools together, you find out that these tools are leading me to the ministry. They are leading me to the ministry. Every time you stand and you see sinners, you cry. Whenever you watch Reinhard Bonke, you cry. Something in you. Every time you see Jake's on stage, something tells you there is a place for you in destiny. There are many of you, every time you see me preach, something in you tells you you will be standing to hold this mic like this. Every time I'm shouting it, people are laughing, but you are not laughing. There is something attracting you. Years ago, every time I saw Benny Hinn and I saw certain ministers of God, sometimes I will go back crying. I will, how many of you have had that kind of feeling? You will cry for days. You cannot tell exactly why you are crying. But you are crying anyway. It's a cry of passion. You must discover your purpose. When you discover your, your potentials, what do you do? Listen, the next thing is you begin to develop it. Develop it. Develop it. Refine it. I beg you, take what I'm teaching you tonight seriously. Develop it. Develop it. The process of developing your potentials is a very difficult process. This is where the boys are separated from the men. Because we live in a generation where many people do not want responsibility. We believe that God is supposed to do everything. But the moment, let me tell you something. That when people say they are idle, it's because they have not found what to work on. Your purpose will occupy you 24 hours will pass, you will not know. There are some of you where you sit down and there is, you have written over five books. When you sit down writing it, you sit down by 4 a.m. in the morning. And when you check the time, it's 8 p.m. in the night. And your colleagues come and say, you are here, passion. Passion is dangerous. It, it brings obsession. You cannot stop. Hallelujah. Develop it. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To develop my potential. See, men of purpose are not people who are idly wasting their time. There are many people, let me say it again, there are so many people wasting their time every day. Visitation to visitation, room to room. Your job is, you don't know what to do with your time. You are just moving. If they say, where are you going? They say, let's go to this place. You say, okay. When you are a man of purpose, there is direction in your life. You value your time. You know that your time is precious. The greatest gift God gave you aside from his son and the Holy Spirit is the gift of time. Every other thing you will do is in time. Many of us sit down and you are sleeping from morning till night. You just check and say 5 p.m. Ah, ah, which kind of siesta did I have today? Purpose will occupy you. Your purpose will help you to know the kind of books to buy. Listen, many of you have made friends with people who have broken your heart because you do not know your purpose. When you find your purpose, you will see a group of people that you belong to. He told, he said, when you go, you will step into a band of prophets and you will begin to prophesy like them. Many of you do not know the kind of groups to belong. Even in church, many of you don't know what departments to serve in because you do not know your purpose. Many of you don't have friends today because everywhere you go in, you don't fit. When you step into the place that has the oil of your purpose, you will fit perfectly. That's why many of you got into mistakes in your relationship and got into big trouble. You know why? Because for many people, out of that desperation, to find a friend that can appeal to you suddenly you just see a brother how great he just ad lips and something attracts you and then you misunderstand that attraction and you land into trouble are you getting me when you discover your purpose see the moment you begin to develop your purpose you begin to develop your potentials self-confidence begins to come not pride self-confidence suddenly you find out that 
I used to be afraid of telling people where I'm coming from. I used to be afraid of telling people my father was a carpenter. Now it doesn't matter anymore. Let me tell you something. When, you know, when I was in primary school into secondary school, there's a hairstyle, punk. How many of you remember? Punk. If the barber messes up that punk, he can spoil your face. And the ladies will not like you. So then, because we did not discover our purpose, that was our obsession. When you go to the barber saloon, the barber better don't play with you. Especially when it's time to go to the church. The pastor's daughter is there. There are many VIPs there. You can't go and mess up yourself. But when I began to walk in purpose, I just found out that I'll go to the barber saloon and I'm thinking, I'm just telling the guy, just clean my hair, make it nice. There are many things that are occupied. Do you know that many things you think about is because you don't have any other thing to think about? When you truly are occupied with purpose, you just stand and say, ah, am I sure it's my, it's my, it's my shoe? Many of you are too meticulous. Guys carry comb in their pocket. You are moving and you carry nonsense when you find purpose. Even if your head is scattered because you are thinking, it will not matter again. Yes, I will say it again. Yes. See a guy behaving like a lady, just be nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. hallelujah purpose when you find your purpose you are grateful to god you live a life of gratitude you stop being angry let me tell you something when you find your purpose your potentials your place in life do you know what it will do to you it will make you to honor and value those who have found their own because you will see that it's not child's play many people disrespect the anointing upon people because you have not found your place so you don't know the level of discipline that it takes to get to that point. When you see the minister sit down, it's easy to look at them and say, this guy self, I have the ability to do that same kind of thing. Because you know when God calls you, you feel you are calling to the ministry. You touch three or four people, they fall. They say, ah, ah, it's Jake's not doing it. Then, as you begin to progress in purpose, when you begin to encounter certain things hallelujah and you begin to pray and build yourself and after praying for hours and building yourself you will see only grace you are seeing in the life of the people you will start respecting them and say so uneasy lies the head that wears this crown let me give you a little story about us do you know we don't watch films there are only few times it's even these days we start watching christian films it's not like it's a taboo it's the sacrifice for the anointing you come to visit me you will watch worship songs and messages and you will read books and you'll be tired no wonder you're antisocial but we are still anointed are you listening to me when you discover your purpose and you begin to walk in it i tell you every day as i progress in ministry every day i keep saluting the fathers of faith that have gone ahead of us because i know that that's not beans managing people becoming successful is one thing managing success is another thing when you become a minister everything about your life is a subject of discussion it takes stamina and audacity to move through are you listening to me when you begin to walk in purpose you will respect people suddenly you will turn as you are becoming a man you will turn and look at your father and say hey so this is why my father used to shout he's really not a bad man now that i'm becoming a man i'm finding out that there are responsibilities that can make men become draculas so that's why my father has become what he is right now shouting and yelling at everybody now you are collecting money from home many of you mommy giving me this daddy give me this the moment you step into responsibility for yourself suddenly you get up and find out that nobody's going to send you money and you drop an application for a job and maybe the job is not coming and you sit back a brother calls you and say sorry brother can you send me two thousand at that point you start having a foretaste of what your father is going through that you are insulting him for listen discovery of purpose makes you respect people are you listening to me 
if you do not discover purpose you will never honor people who have gone ahead of you because you will trivialize their sacrifice you will trivialize it you are insulting your father for not having a jeep but he has a house that you are inside the day you are about to get married and you go out you have your money but you can't find a house you will salute your father are you listening to me the day they make you a class monitor and your class members want to beat you because you did not advocate for them for assignment you say oh so what of those who are leaders over thousands many of you who sit down just wish and say hey i wish i was joshua selman speaking to hundreds and thousands of people in Kono. this guy is enjoying you know they are giving him water please come and sit down and take the water i promise you listen i give you three days you will cry and run with my anointing and bring it back and give me i promise you hallelujah you see john for prophesy and you are laughing guy how can he know about your life the day you tell somebody something and they lock you for it that day you will say whether you really want to be a prophet or not are you listening to me discovery of purpose makes you to honor the grace upon people every day i keep respecting let me tell you something my outlook for my father and my mother changed when i started taking responsibility for my life i knew it was not child's play with all the tongues i'm speaking with all of this i say so now they were not filled with the holy ghost they were not praying in tongues they are not hearing what you are hearing but they try to do what they have done many of you after now you need to go and send text messages to your parents and tell them you love them and you respect them you have been insulting them and say only ten thousand he's not ashamed his mate the elrufa is his classmate okay very soon say you have told your father you marry in two years very soon you will see what it means to be a man you will see what it means to be a woman many of you who stand and speak to your mothers and just insult them and say mommy let me tell you i'm not a small girl again no please don't insult i will wash you now a small child poops in front of you and you're like ah, ah, and you want to be a mother huh. welcome to the world of reality when every childishness is washed away by time and wisdom hallelujah are you getting me these messages that i preach are hard messages but they are messages for those who are interested in their destiny not everybody likes me and i understand that but if you will listen let me tell you something about a life there is a difference between teaching and training are you listening to me a teacher can share but when you are being trained when you are being coached that's not the time to pamper you are you listening to me that's not the time to pamper you a coach presses you to bring out the best in you and then when it's time for the race and you take first position the sower and the reaper are both happy many of you may say why is this guy always shouting his messages are always hard you will appreciate it when you step out and see the difference between you and others you will thank god for this word you are receiving today are you listening to me you are receiving it free but let me tell you those who are not receiving it today will pay for it tomorrow it will not be as free as it is today are you listening to me they will pay for it and many will pay i'm not talking of paying with money they will pay with time they will pay with their tears to receive some of these truths say i was born for a reason i was born for a reason i always told myself this there is something about my life i'm not a non-entity i'm not a non-entity today when i confess it i know it is true look at what the lord has done in my life do you know every time i'm sharing with you this to the glory of god i have seen the honor of god in my life i have seen the blessings of god i saw my head boy today he was two years my senior when i was in ss1 in secondary school he was the senior prefect i saw him today i saw him on bike and he was just running and he was going to discuss with somebody and tears filled my eyes i think it was ik who was driving me i said once upon a time 
this guy was my head boy today he calls me sir what takes a man from a place where he's nobody are you listening to me to a place of prominence the lord has honored me in my little life within this country outside this country i have seen the mercies of god i have seen the grace of god the things that people run after god has honored me with this is what i want your life to at least become my greatest goal is for the least of you to be better than me there is no reason why you should be the same as me if you become the same as me i have failed my prayer my cry every time i pray for you i say lord let the least among us be as great as them i hope you appreciate what you are receiving you see let me tell you something there are many of you that do not know the sacrifice of bringing the word of god to you it's easy speakers are all arranged are you listening to me chairs are arranged all people pray and you just come in and stroll in and sit down let's hear what he has to say ah. in the days of samuel when the word was cast many of you god is intercepting your life because you did not receive this training from home many of you came from every different kinds of backgrounds but god is intercepting your life to change you i hope you value it i hope you take it serious my son the bible says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst of your heart years ago let me tell you this i shared with some of my classmates what i'm sharing with you many of them laughed at me many of them thought we were just being ambitious and being stupid people today by the grace of god and the sure mercies of david the gap between me and my contemporaries far by far are you listening to me everything i spoke and i prophesied i have seen a major part of it today in my life that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled of the word of life we declare unto you in 2006 when we were leading a people for crusade they insulted us they called us all kinds of names but by the grace and the mercy of god today you are a proof of our apostleship if it is true that we are called if it is true that we are anointed you are the testament of the fact that god is at work in this place but tomorrow it will be your turn are you listening to me tomorrow the stage will be opened and it will be your turn to bring the word of the lord to the nations in ministry in business in life whatever you are going through today endure it develop your potentials don't be too quick to start manifesting uh -uh, uh -uh. david killed the bear he killed the lion but he went back to the secret place do you know compared to where god is taking me i am still under rehearsals i keep telling people i'm still under training you have not seen the best of me yet uh -uh. what you are seeing today is the prophecy of yesterday tomorrow you will know what i'm speaking today i've seen many of you have seen yourself in visions every time you sleep you see yourself a leader over others a ministry over churches there are many of you here there are churches and ministries apostolic ministries prophetic ministries music ministries financial ministries businesses locked up inside of you waiting for manifestation there are many of you you are the next media moguls you are the next oprah winfrey's and the rest you are the people who will come and interview us you are the ones who will change the course of history do you believe this about yourself i am motivating you tonight we are going to pray and that prayer is a cry you are going to say lord help me i don't care whether you are young or old many people covering their purpose hear me friends if you do not discover your purpose you will join the queue of frustration that is going on in nigeria many jobless people parading the streets of nigeria they graduated with first class they graduated with two one they have nothing to do with their lives i hope you know listen to me i hope you know many of our parents who are suffering today 
they, they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hello? But in spite of their being filled with the Holy Ghost, in spite of their Bible study, they are still suffering. Pastor Chris said something that I respect so much. He said, you cannot park in the same parking lot of your parents and expect a different result. That's why God is intercepting your life. I made up my mind that I was not going to follow the road of a failure. Are you listening to me? Right now is the time to sow. The Bible says, he that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. Listen, what will kill many of you is convenience. You like convenience too much. That Christianity of, I'm not, say, I'm not against comfort, but let the days come. Many of you see me wearing suits today and you want to go and buy my kind of suit. Find out what I was doing when I was... I say it with all humility. You see ministers stand and you want to do what they are doing. You want to eat food in Shagalinku. Instead of you to carry that 500 naira and buy a book. Do you know one of the biggest problems we have in the church? Our fathers have lied to us. They have refused... Listen... They have refused to open up their clothes and show us their scars. They hide their scars and they tell us just speak it and it will happen. But I'm not hiding it. I hope you appreciate it. Many people lie to you. They say, ah, I've never suffered in my life. I just moved and things began to happen. Hallelujah. Are you joking? Are you playing? For there is a scar. Paul said, let no man trouble me for I bear in my body. There is a mark that you receive now. Even Jesus Christ has the mark that brought him greatness. Those scars are still in his hands. Don't be ashamed of your scars. Don't let new creation teaching make you fool yourself and be ashamed of your scars. Many of you, because of your testimony, you drink Gary, keep drinking it and saying, my life is better. There is something in my life. I cannot afford it today. I'm not ashamed of my one trouser. I will not be covetous. No, no. I cannot afford 300 naira cream. I will use the homemade Vaseline. But as I'm using it, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. My destiny will blossom and will show up one day. If you came tonight to hear a word that will change you, this is it. I'm preaching tonight from the depth of my heart. And I hope you appreciate what I'm telling you. You may not be able to make your hair. Don't envy anybody. You don't know how they got there. Just pay the price. Pay the price. He that weepeth, bearing precious seed. I made up my mind 10 years ago that I was not going to be poor. So don't see me today and some of the blessings that God is helping me. I didn't make the resolution last year. You will frustrate yourself if you want to be like me in three days. Are you listening to me? Somebody came to T.D. Jakes and said i want the anointing upon your life he said you are such an influential man new york's best time a bestseller i want the anointing on your life and he nailed them until the jake says lord send him tribulations lord send him persecutions for every time you ask god for the throne you will see a goliath standing in front of you if you cannot kill that goliath you are not going to the throne i assure you friends many people will speak against the message i'm teaching you today and they'll say i'm not helping you but the future will tell are you listening to me we are going to pray but let me just learn something in my spirit pay the price i do not see many people who are paying the price many of us don't pay the price in the place of prayer many of us don't pay the price in the place of duty how many of you you said god has called you to be a kingdom financier how many books on finance have you read i assure you i don't care if a gallon of oil is poured on your head you will never become a millionaire god's way no sir it doesn't work that way you want to get married next year how many books on fatherhood have you read how many books on godly parenting have you read am i challenging you in this place you want to get into a relationship how many books about men have you read you think a man is another woman god has told you you are a leader why don't you become an uncommon leader go and goggle principles of godly leadership buy tapes buy books you are sitting down mid-semester break 
you hear that there is a leadership summit happening in Abuja, quickly carry your remaining 3,000 and run there. Go and sit down quietly and listen to generals of the faith speak. Before you criticize them, listen to them. You have not gotten to where they are getting, so shut your mouth and just listen first. No matter how much mistakes they are making, it's not by trial and error they establish those levels of grace. You have something to learn. Are you listening to me? Sit down under that anointing. See, many of you, I, let me tell you something. There are many of you who, I pray that you don't regret the opportunities you have today. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you see the ministers, they wear jeans like you, they laugh like you. Be careful so you don't get too familiar. You are not standing in the same realm. If I were you, I would run one day and pin one minister and buy him Zobo and say, teach me something about leadership and refuse. Say, I will not let you go. Many of you don't know how to press for your destiny. Are you listening to me? Go around Zaria, go and go. go. Who are the ministers? and the leaders that have displayed the quality of what you want god has told you you are going to have a miracle ministry you are just sitting down and lying down you think the holy ghost will come upon you just like that hallelujah many of you may need to contribute money you and your roommate contribute money and buy my tv and put in your room people say ah enjoyment you know what you are pursuing are you listening to me you are not dressing well you have one shirt but you have a set light and you have a TV. People say, what kind of enjoyment is that? You know what you are pursuing. While those messages are playing, you are saying, Lord, I receive. There is grace I receive. Are you listening to me? Go and buy tapes, buy MP3s, worship people. Refuse average in your life. Refuse it. From class, run and go somewhere. See, I challenge you. See, I am on my knees begging you listen to me i'm on my knees begging you if you take what i'm saying seriously you will be a champion in life but if you play with what i'm saying you will see how messed up your life will become hallelujah i'm preaching tonight from my heart that which i have i give unto you enough of failures in life it takes sacrifice you will cry oh let me tell you i'm not the kind of person that will preach that gospel to you your crying is not because you are backsliding he that weepeth bearing precious seeds you are holding your seeds lord enough is it's not much that is coming but i will keep giving i will keep tightening i will support your house lord just one shed but i will give i have two sheds but i will still sow one lord i am serious i am diligent in the place of prayer people may insult me but i continue my roommate say i don't have perfume my body is smelling but let me be a prayerful smelling person i am still praying oh lord i keep praying and then your glory will break forth like the morning and you will rise a day will come everything you are longing for you will get it at a platter of gold did i ever know that a day will come in my life when i will not need to think of what to eat again those days are here are you listening to me the car you don't have today stop admiring and claiming cars sit down and start working on yourself every car that pass i claim it far 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 foul that gospel that they taught you better repent of it this night that's covetousness not claiming you sit down and partner with the holy ghost and you will become a champion stay with your bible in the place of 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 sacrifice listen i want to see a situation where from tomorrow morning from this night all of us are working wake up in the morning write something about your life don't waste your time any see your enemy is the person that comes to distract you don't be afraid to tell people now is not the time to gist you are working when you are walking, somebody just comes. Ah, I so you just smile and tell the person, sorry, but I'm doing a little work. And I say, eh, stupid people, they always try to claim they are serious. If you are ashamed of your reputation, you will not be great in life. You must die to be a champion. Great men are those who have died in themselves. Paul said, I die daily. Hallelujah. One last point to discovering your purpose is service you will never be a leader until you become a good servant many people see me today and think i was just crossing my legs 
and then the anointing just came bam and god said just get up here is suit wear quickly and start ministry you think so i shared my story when i used to play there's a man called reverend emmanuel amechi i don't know where that man is power praise chapel then his church i used to play keyboard for him 1996 i would play keyboard for him let me tell you something the only thing i remember them doing for me once was during the launching of his uh, of this they gave me one cassette and one fanta that's the only thing they did for those of you who do something say the way we are singing we are, we are serving in koinonia ushering they are supposed to be paying us so say you are rich leave please leave we are looking for serious destiny don't you know that you are learning your destiny free of charge see you kill yourself and it happens a lot to musicians you have not gone anywhere you are saying they should pay me don't you know that you are learning hallelujah when you find yourself serving in a church or in a body never complain see it as an opportunity to learn it will give you discipline are you listening to me discipline you cannot be a leader until you are a good servant you must be able to serve you will learn the discipline and the regiments of service many of you as you are serving one day they will give you they will give you an opportunity they'll say now um josiah please help us to lead prayers five minutes that will be the first time you'll be uncovering the grace of god upon your life you who has thought that you are not anointed that day you just stand five minutes prayer you change the atmosphere suddenly it leaves you with a question how many of you has that happened to your faculty fellowship they just say there's a choir uh, femi just lead uh, 20 minutes praise and worship and you lead praise and worship and people dance after the choir they keep singing your song and then you start discovering that there's something about me service service is the place of discovery many of you who are not serving in the house of god you call that smartness you are cheating yourself you learn a lot of things are you listening to me you serve god take responsibility for your life stop insulting your father and mother and say my father was smarter i'll be better if my mother was this i'll be better if they were sending me more pocket money no don't be ashamed of your tears stop leaving a realm that you have not yet gotten to you will get there ladies you will not have to change your weave on every two two days you don't have that kind of money stop frustrating yourself a day will come you will own a boutique you will own a spa a spa center you can change your hair every day stop killing yourself right now the brothers know you are laboring to enter your rest and they appreciate it hallelujah and for the guys do your best stop borrowing clothes from everybody so that you will be smart be contented with what you have say kai that lady looked at my leg when we were talking the last time i beg help me with your canvas why must you pretend You borrow car, you borrow Blackberry, you borrow everything. You don't know how to use it. You put yourself under pressure. You carry 50,000 that God bless you with. I need to buy a baby. Need to buy a baby. Don't sit down and press for your destiny. What is it about a Blackberry that, that you cannot get? Are you listening to me? I'm challenging you tonight. Away with childlessness. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. Like a child when you become a man you lay aside childish things rise up on your feet and let's pray bless the lord for tonight purpose and destiny go ahead and pray in the spirit say lord i bless you for this word I receive your word with meekness. I receive your word with gladness. Yes, I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Pray. Say, Lord, tonight I receive grace to discover my purpose I refuse to be a non-entity 
I stop wasting my life. I stop wasting my time. I pay the price. Pray. Lord, reveal to me what am I on earth for? Why am I here? Why did you bring me here? Mataka Patalabasa. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you. I separated you to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah said, I am a young man. He said, I'm a young man. God said, No, I will put my word in your mouth. And you will declare, Don't be afraid of them. Let entrepreneurs arise. Let apostolic ministries arise. Prophetic ministries arise. Evangelistic ministries arise. Let businessmen arise. Kingdom financiers arise. Life coaches arise. Come on, pray. Media giants arise. Educationists arise in the name that is above every name. Managers arise. Pastors arise. Apostles arise. Prophets arise. Interior decoration giants, I call you arise. Kingdom caterers, arise. Sportsmen, arise. Kingdom celebrities, beauticians, consultants, the kingdom needs you. In the name of Jesus, arise. Scientists, arise. Manufacturers arise, music ministers in the name of Jesus arise. Come on, pray. I discover my assignment. I discover my assignment in the name of Jesus. I find my place in life. I stop escorting men. I stop escorting men. I find my place. The place of glory, the place of victory, the place of breakthrough. No, I come in the volume of the book as it is written concerning me to do your will. Pray. I am not a nobody. My world will celebrate me. Prophesy to yourself. Nigeria will hear your voice. Africa will hear your voice. The Moses of our time, the Joshua's of our time, the Elijah's of our time. Rise up, generals. Rise up, generals. Pray. I find my place in life. I pay the price. I read the books, I pray, I give, I serve my way into glory. You are a celebrity, you are a champion. God will give you the fame, God will give you the grace, He will give you prosperity like you have never seen he will give you anointing the husband will come the wife will come but stay in the place of destiny stop giving excuses stop giving excuses repent tonight flimsy excuses stop giving excuses take responsibility over your life Stop blaming the government.
Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your background. Stop blaming your uncle. Take responsibility for your life. Come on, pray. Shake a take a pata. Go support us a pata. Let the pot us a play get a better rose. Let the least among us be as mighty as David. You will preach this message to your congregations. You will preach this message to your children. You will preach this message to your business partners. You will preach this message. One day you will be on air. One day you will be on satellite. The world will hear you. You will make reference to this day. I open up the portals of destiny over your life. I open up the portals of purpose over your life. Let revelation come. Let revelation come. I prophesy to you, find your place. 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 There is a place for you. Only you. Only you. You are an answer. You are a solution to a problem. Don't rob us. Don't rob us. There is something about your life that our generation needs. Don't die with your gift. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.